So, good morning, everyone. I'm Charlotte Morton. I'm the chief executive of the World Biogas Association, um, and I'm delighted to see you all here. Welcome formally to the World Biogas Summit, uh, both to all of you here, I should say, and also to all of you who are joining us uh, virtually. The pandemic has taught us two things, the value of being able to network and the value of being able to connect with the rest of the world via Zoom. So here at the Birmingham NEC, we have the best of both worlds, with our dedicated interactive platform allowing colleagues from all corners of the world to engage with us. This is critically important. Six months ago, I represented WBA at COP26, highlighting the need for urgent action on methane emissions. It was wholly coincidental that the Global Methane Pledge emerged from the conference, although I will point out that the WBA started banging the drum about methane over three years ago. Aside from the pledge, one clear message emerged from COP26. All countries were told that they needed to return to COP27 this year with more ambitious plans, nationally determined contributions to achieve net zero. That means all NDCs must include biogas. As our colleagues in ADBA say, there is simply no net zero without biogas. If the over 105 billion tons of organic waste produced by human activity every year remain untreated, they will continue to emit methane. Ton for ton, 86 times more potent as a greenhouse gas than carbon. Our industry is the climate life belt, recognized as such by the UN, the IPCC, the Climate and Clean Air Coalition, and it's central to the methane strategies of both the EU and the US Environmental Protection Agency. We have a 10-year window of opportunity to act, to transition away from the take, make, and throw away linear economy to a circular one, where we eliminate waste and pollution, we circulate products and materials and regenerate nature, underpinned by a transition to renewable energy and materials. Achieving this is a question of design, transforming systems and processes to design out waste. Our industry sits at the heart of the circular economy. At our full potential, by recycling all the readily available organic wastes, we can generate 10,000 to 14,000 terawatt hours of green energy, meeting 6 to 9% of the world's total primary energy consumption. If we upgraded all the biogas to biomethane, we could substitute around a third of today's current natural gas consumption. By recycling all readily available organic wastes, we can reduce global greenhouse gas emissions by 10%. And as a mature, sophisticated, and ready-to-go technology, we could reach that potential by 2030, with the right enabling environment, of course. In doing so, we would deliver 50% of the Global Methane Pledge to reduce emissions against 2020 levels by 30% by 2030. That's the equivalent of taking all cars, lorries, shipping net zero, according to John Kerry when announcing the pledge. But if this, all, if this was all we delivered, the proposition would be an excellent one. But it isn't. Aside from energy, our industry can recover from the treatment of organic wastes, renewable natural fertilizer, and bio CO2. Currently, the global production of mineral fertilizer annually uses around 2% of all energy generated, 
and creates CO2, the strategically important gas required in sectors such as food manufacturing and chemical refining. When energy prices rise, production invariably stops. The last time this happened was in 2019. Even before Russia's murderous invasion of Ukraine, we were being warned of an impending food crisis arising as a result of rising energy prices. It doesn't make sense to sustain this business model. So we should heed the warnings of another crisis, the soil crisis. We are warned that current farming practices have degraded this source of all the world's calories to the point where we have perhaps 50 harvests left. Biogas is the key to regenerative farming. Photosynthesis is the quickest and most efficient way to remove carbon from the atmosphere. Biogas allows us to capture the benefits of that in the form of energy, valuable minerals and nutrients, and bio-CO2 from farm to fork and back again. With so many reasons to deploy biogas worldwide, this Global Thought Leadership Summit aims to empower countries to develop the enabling environment to make it possible to rapidly and sustainably deploy biogas with a clear focus on best practice. For this, I very much need to thank our sponsors, as without their support, we simply wouldn't be able to offer a free-to-attend World Biogas Summit. So a huge thank you to Hexagen Agility, Marathon Capital, Total Energies, and Uhuru Energy. And I'm now delighted to pass the floor to the newly appointed chairman of the Anaerobic Digestion and Bioresources Association, ADBA, Chris Hume. But shortly, we are going to hear from the White House and the Second Lady of Ghana. But before that, um, we are going to hear from Roberta Cheney, both of whom are on the stage. But first, let me pass over to Chris Hume. Thank you. Well, thank you very, thank you very much, Charlotte. Um, I'm delighted to be here. I'm delighted to be taking over as chair of the Anaerobic Digestion and Bioresources Association right now for reasons that I uh, will try and explain. I think this is an exceptionally exciting moment to be involved in the biogas sector uh, because I think a lot of the solutions which many of us know uh, have been championed by uh, Charlotte and her team for a very long time uh, in biogas are actually particularly pertinent uh, today. And I thought it was particularly good timing. I should perhaps kick off by saying, <laughs> they're taking the computer away. Have I got any words? Yes. Um, I think I should start by uh, pointing out, for those who haven't noticed, that Charlotte was recently honored in the, uh, in the Queen's honors list for her services to uh, renewables and to biogas, and that is, I think, a very, uh, very legitimate. And Charlotte, Charlotte has made a very important contribution, as we all know. I think also it's great to be back after the COVID break in a real venue with a real expo, uh, and I think you can get a sense of the buzz uh, that is there in the industry. Because this is uh, a technology which is absolutely essential if we're going to decarbonize farming. As Charlotte has already said, it is a crucial role to play in the run-up uh, to uh, a solution to climate change. Secondly, it's absolutely crucial too because for those of us who live in the Northern Hemisphere, um, this is a technology which can be turned off and turned on. It's dispatchable. So unlike wind, unlike solar, uh, biogas is there when you need it, when the days are short in Canada or the northern United States or northern Europe. Uh, it's there to provide heat when you need it. It's there to provide 
electricity uh, or gas uh, when you need it. Whereas, of course, we know solar and wind are great, marvelous technologies where the price, the cost is coming down dramatically, but they have one enormous uh, potential drawback, which is when the sun is not shining, you don't get any solar, and when the wind is not blowing, you don't get any wind. So looking at the renewable technologies, which can fill that gap, maintain the integrity of grids through uh, a winter period in the Northern Hemisphere, is absolutely crucial. And biogas has that key um, advantage. And people sometimes say, well, it's not big enough. Well, I think Charlotte has given some very telling uh, um, uh, figures on the potential scale. But remember that it is often lots of small businesses that can make a much bigger impact turning around uh, a sector than one or two really big businesses. And farming itself, after all, uh, is formed by comparison with most other sectors of the world economy of very large numbers of small units, and yet is absolutely essential uh, to our well-being. And for exactly that reason, AD as a technology, although each individual AD plant may be small by comparison with a, a new nuclear plant or a massive offshore uh, wind installation, taken together, you actually see an enormous impact uh, on the solution. So uh, it is big enough. And then finally, the bear in the room, the Russian invasion of Ukraine. People are looking at the economic environment today and saying, look, there is an enormous opportunity uh, for biogas because of what has happened to natural gas prices as the natural competitor for biogas what has happened to natural gas prices, which are, I've just checked as before coming on the stand, 145% higher in Europe today than they were exactly a year ago. Now, a lot of people say, ah, oh, yes, but this isn't going to last. This isn't about, uh, this is the Russia-Ukraine conflict. And of course, the Russia-Ukraine conflict is uh, absolutely appalling, and it has had a substantial impact on the market. But it's worth pointing out that the gas price in Europe at the Dutch TTF hub uh, was actually slightly lower, only slightly lower by less than a euro uh, the day before the Russian invasion than it is today. So the Russian invasion has had an impact, and it certainly sent gas prices soaring up, but that's actually come down. And what we mustn't forget is that there had already been a very substantial run-up in natural gas prices uh, going up to prior to the uh, uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. And I don't think that's going away anytime soon. The demand for gas is there. Uh, the fundamental supply constraints around the world for LNG, uh, for U.S. Uh, shale gas are there, and that environment is going to continue for biogas. And that's why I think we have a unique opportunity in the sector now, and why I'm so pleased to be taking over the chairmanship of ADBA now, precisely because I think that the case for the industry is so much stronger and is so obviously strong right now in these circumstances that investors are newly interested, technologists and um, uh, developers are newly interested, farmers are newly interested. There are enormous opportunities, and I very much look forward to sharing uh, that journey uh, with all of you. So thank you again for inviting me, and I'll now hand back to Charlotte uh, to orchestrate the remainder of our panel.